really much tervepä terve again. In this screencast video, I'm going to show you how to make some UI changes to the D365 portals. This is the second part of my video series of D365 portals. In the first one, I showed you how to install the portal and how to make some basic configurations into that. Today, I'm going to show you three things what you can do for customizing your D365 portal. Uh, of course, you can do lots of things for that, but I've picked three different things to demonstrate what kind of possibilities you have, for example, to do to customize the portal look and feel. So here I have our uh, sample portal, which I have already customized a bit. Um, this is a community portal template that I've used here as a basis and then I've uh, ripped out some of the uh, predefined stuff and then applied custom image and custom logo and, and that kind of stuff into this portal here. So the three things that I'm going to show you are how to change the logo, logo of, the, of the header part how to change the color of the header bar and how to apply a custom bootstrap template into the uh, portal page here. D365 portals use bootstrap um, technology or templates to make the look and feel of the portal UI. If you don't know what bootstrap is you can find out easily information about that from the web it's kind of like a, a generic technology or a way to apply um, CSS um, to your website or web pages so let's start by changing the logo here in the top part of the page um, I already have the cloud driven logo over there and but I want to make it make change to that and apply a different logo to the top part. So how you find out where to do that is that you need to go into the D365 portal section and check the web templates. And in here it's kind of easy to guess that we are uh, dealing with a header web template for doing the changes for the for that part of the page and how the logo is actually applied here is that um, you need to check that what is the um, content snippet that uh, that has the logo applied um, and for that you need to know a bit the source code of the portals the liquid um, source code and if you that's quite easy to examine actually and here we are looking at the header part source code and the uh, content snippets are here in the top of the top part of the page and uh, the snippet that contains the header and the logo is called navbar left and to make changes to that, I need to go to the content snippet area or section of the portals and search for the navbar left um, snippet. And that's this one over here. When we look at the source code of it, we can see that uh, there's an HTML uh, code where the image is actually applied and we can see that there is a cloud driven logo png file which is used as a source for the logo itself so now i need to uh, and these are actually web files here in the d365 portal terminology so i need to save the new logo as a new web file to the to the portal and then come here and make the change to this part so I go to web files next and here I can see that I have the cloud driven logo web file already here. So I need to 
make or create another uh, logo too, for example. So we do cloud driven logo to website community portal parent page. Let's set it as a home and part uh, partial URL. This is important because this is the name which is used in the source code to refer the web file into the content snippet. So we use cloud driven logo to dot png for example you don't have to have the file extension necessarily over there but i've used to using that the publishing state is published and the file itself is actually saved to the uh, web file as a note and here is actually one issue that I've seen here in the new user interface of the of the portals. So as you can see, there is no way to upload actually a file into the nodes. Um, I'm not sure if there are other ways to go around this issue, but one thing that I've seen and which works is that I go to the admin section and then go to the system settings and here I scroll down a bit where there are the form, the legacy form uh, rendering used yes or no. So for this I select yes and after that the legacy form type will be loaded. Now I go back to the web files I have the cloud driven logo too. And now the old type of, of uh, the Dynamics forms are actually used. And I need to refresh the browser probably. Control F5, the legendary way of clearing the browser cache. And now, as we can see, the forms get loaded a bit different way, meaning the legacy forms. Now I have in the notes section a possibility to upload a file attachment. So I put CD logo 2 here as a title. It doesn't matter actually because it's not used, uh, the file name itself. And I have already Cloud Driven Logo 2 PNG file here, which I'm going to use. And then I click Done. And now it's uploaded to the system. So now I have a web file containing my second Cloud Driven Logo that I want to have in the in the uh, portal header. Next I'm going, going back to the content snippets and go again to the navbar left check the source code and I need to make a change so that the web file that is actually used is, is, is called Cloud Driven Logo 2. I save the changes, go back to the portal, refresh the page and see how it works. Probably the caching is not, or, or ca the, um, the contents of the page is cached, so as you can see there was no, there, there was no changes. But then I go to this type of a page where I can clear the portal server side cache. It's actually in your uh, portal URL uh, slash underscore services slash about URL. Here you can click the clear cache button. I go back to the um, portal page, home page, 
and hit Ctrl F5 and now we can see that the new logo was applied or the logo was changed and now the color of the text and the Cloudrunner logo is pink instead of white. Okay, so the next part I'm going to change the color of the header ribbon or bar over there in the top part of the home page. And how that is done is that you need to modify a CSS file that is used here in this portal um, page. And there, once you are here in the portal logged in as an admin, uh, content uh, admin privileges, you can see that there is this content management um, control here on the right side. And if you click the children button over there, you can see all the stuff that is applied in the home page here. For example, the Cloudrunner logo 2 that we just uploaded. And the file that you need to make some changes is called theme.css. And uh, before making changes to that, I strongly encourage to take backups of it and store it some other place where you make the changes to the CSS file before applying that. I've already done that. I have it stored in a different folder and um, I have the theme.css file here, which I'm going to make some changes to. I use Notepad++ to make the changes and um, here again, you need to know a bit of CSS and how to find the uh, correct place where to make the background color change. Uh, one way of doing that is going back to the CRM and then examining the web template again. If I quickly show you the header template and the liquid source code, once it gets loaded here, you can see that the CSS class that is applied to the header or the classes are called navbar, navbar inverse, navbar static top. And if you go back to the theme.css file, you can see here that this is the navbar inverse, navbar static top class where the background color gets applied. And let's say that I want to make the change so that the color of the header part is the same as we have in the Cloud Riven website. So I go now to the Cloud Riven website and use the Chrome color picker to select the color. Its code is now copied to my uh, clipboard. I go back to the uh, notepad plus plus and then paste the new background color code into the CSS file. I save the changes and go to the front page of my portal. Now I click the children button over here and edit the theme.css file and I want to upload the modified CSS file, which I just made changes to. So it's this one over here. It's 10th of uh, May, five past eight in the evening. So it's just the correct one. I select, select that. And the important part is the partial URL value here. It needs to be theme.css. So that makes sure that the old one gets overwritten. I click save here and click save here again and we'll see if the magic will happen after the saving is completed. So it starts to re reload the uh, page again and uh, let's see if it's because of the browser or the server side caching again that the changes were not applied. So I click this clear cache again from the portal admin page, come back here and click Ctrl F5 from the browser. And as we can see, the header 
background color was changed to be the same as we have in the cloud-driven website header uh, background color. Okay, so then the third one, uh, the final part of this session here today is to show you how to apply a custom bootstrap template into the uh, portal page. And for that, I again strongly encourage you to take a backup of the original before you make any changes to that. How to take a backup of the original is to go in uh, go to the web files again here in the D365 and here you have the bootstrap.min.css file which you can download here and then store it in a different folder and after that only apply a customized template or uh, something which you download uh, from some bootstrap website. I've used uh, the Bootswatch website to download the journal type of uh, template. There are other ones which you can use, but for demonstration purposes, I use the journal here today. So I go back to the portal page and click the children again. And once the window gets loaded, then I can actually upload a customized bootstrap.min.css file here. So I click the edit button and click the browse to browse to the customized bootstrap and I have a, the journal already downloaded here. So this is the journal bootstrap CSS file. I select that one and again I need to make sure that the partial URL value is set to bootstrap.min.css and you can also check the hidden from sitemap checkbox here to make sure that it's not shown in the sitemap the file itself click save save again here and i'm not actually sure how it will be lo uh, looking like after the changes so it's kind of interesting to see what kind of changes will be applied after the page and caching is refreshed. So as you can see, changes were actually applied. Uh, the template that I downloaded over there contained some different values to the bootstrap um, parameters. So for example, there's the uh, name of the organization contained in another variable, which is now shown over here. And also some other things were changed, for example, the font types and so on. So this is the way to make changes to the complete look and feel of the portal. And as you have the backup of the original CSS file, you can always get back to the original one by just uploading the same uh, file from the from your backup location. So let's do that one more time. So I go here to the bootstrap.min.css and browse to the original, which I have over here, bootstrap.min.css file, click save click save clear the server side cache and clear the browser side cache and now we are back to the original one so hopefully you got a basic idea how to make the UI changes to the D365 portals. As I mentioned in the beginning, there are several other things that you can do, but this was these three things were picked to make you uh, make uh, hopefully give you the basic understanding uh, about the possibilities that there are to fine tune the look and feel of the portals. So again, thank you for watching and have a great day.